Hey, everybody. Pleased to be joined now by PFL Featherweight. He's got a fight coming up with Lance the Party Palmer. It is super Steven Seiler. Steven, it's uh, it's interesting. I, I do a, a variety of podcasts, and the other day we did a podcast on the Ultimate Fighter 14 finale, which was interesting because you were a part of the Ultimate Fighter 14, and I had no idea. It had been like six years since that yeah. show had had wrapped up what's uh what's this journey been like for you because i you know everybody seems to get into mixed martial arts for different reasons some want to make it big some want to you know just test themselves uh you know you're, you're still around six years later after your breakout and you know trying to make a name for yourself and and, and make a ton of money uh across the way what's it been like though since the the, the show and where you're at now um it's been fun i mean definitely been interesting uh, travel different organizations, fight, trying to fight as often as I can. I want to, my goal is to get over a hundred professional fights. So I'm just trying to keep active, which hopefully the PFL season next season kind of helps out with that, with activity. Um, but it's been nice. I just enjoy fighting too much to stop. So I'm, I don't, and I got a day job now, so I'm making money on the side doing that. So I'm not relying on fighting full time, but I, I just love it too much to quit. Uh, th that's interesting. You mentioned a day job. I, I talked to a variety of fighters and, you know, working for Invicta, uh, the, the ladies over there, they come from all walks of life. Some are full time fighters. Others are stay at home moms. Others do all three fighting mothers, you know, uh, leading a professional life as well. There are sometimes red flags, though, when a fighter says they're working a full time job and fighting on the side, especially when someone like yourself is fighting uh, Lance Palmer, who, you know, absolutely day in, day out is training. Um, obviously, you're training as well, but I'm, I'm curious because I think that your experience may not be necessarily, um, you know, I think your experience is actually one of the reasons I think that it would not be a red flag for you to be a full-time worker in the day and, and a mixed martial artist at night. Cause I mean, you, you've, you've fought under the, the, the brightest light. So t tell me what that's like though. Is, is it a detriment at all? Uh, you know, fighting and, and, you know, working a day job and, and providing. Well, that, that's the thing. I, I said, I got a job, never said a full-time job. Okay, I work seven to 11. I only work part time. I work seven to eleven. Uh, once eleven o'clock comes, I usually get ready. Uh, and then my main training partner is Court McGee, and we kind of work around each other's schedule. Uh, we try to book our fights around the same time, so we're in camp around the same time. We kind of work each other, whatever works for us. If I have something come up today, like I had some interviews today, we push practice back to one or uh, later. We just work around our own schedules, and then. Uh, yeah, so I work 7 to 11, get ready, the head of the gym, hang out at the gym. I work from home. I mean, I literally – I do credit repair online, and I literally play PlayStation for four hours of the morning till I get ready to go to practice. So nothing hard on the body, nothing like that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still training twice a day, getting ready, you know, for the fight just as any, any other fighter. I mean, you don't need to work out, you know, 17 hours of the day. You just only work out, what, four or five, just kind of working between my hours. Sure, that, that's good. You, you need that video game time too, for sure. That uh, little mental used, mental I break. To, I, didn't, I didn't used to. Once I had my my first kid, uh, he never gave me a chance to play video games. So I got rid of my PlayStation Four, and then once I got the day job, I'm like, I can't sit here on the computer for four hours and do nothing. Right. So we re inherited the PlayStation Four, and I just like switch it up between sport games every day while uh, working. <laughs> that's nice. What are you playing right now? Uh, you know, I'm on MLB The Show right now. Baseball season's ending up, uh, finishing up, and uh, I'm still playing a little bit of that. Then I'll probably get in some NBA 2K here in the next couple weeks. Nice. You got to change with the seasons. I like it. Um, l l let's talk a little bit about uh, Lance Palmer. This is your PFL debut. The PFL is coming out doing a lot of uh, different things, saying some things, trying to make some waves. Um, you fought all over the place. The Open Fighting Championship. We, we saw you in Titan FC. What was it about this opportunity with PFL that caused you to sign with this organization and, and move forward? Um, well, for, you know, obviously I signed with the World Series first, uh, which became PFL, but uh, just Ray Safo, man. Ray is an amazing guy. You know, he's there for the fighters. Um, you know, they, they paid me great. You know, I they treated me really well. My first show I was out there, I felt like I was in the UFC all over again, how, how professional they were. Um and just I mean, they have tough matchups. Andre Harrison, you know, I fought him to a split decision. He's 
I mean, he's well deserved. He's been the UF- should have been the UFC. Lance Palmer should have been the UFC by now. Uh, we, I mean, we all have the top forty fivers. I mean, we have a really good list of forty fivers here at uh, PFL. So, um, you know, I, w- I want the competition. I want to have fun, and also eventually, I want to win that million dollars. Yeah, I mean, the money I think is the the big thing that is setting PFL apart. And obviously, World Series PFL, it's it's all the same. It's semantics, but the attitude and the approach that the Professional Fighters League is bringing, mainly the money, the tournament, it. it it's almost like a make or break proposition for the company. And I think as a fighter, it's got to feel sort of special to be a part of that because I mean, a million dollars in mixed martial arts for anybody at this point, that's a ton of money Um, to do it when you're, you know, one of the the smaller promotions, it's a huge investment. What does that mean to you to see, you know, the higher ups within this company go, you know what, We're, we're all in and we're all in on these guys. Well, like I said, Ray, like you can tell he's there for the fighters. He wants what's best for them. So, you know, I'm glad they're all working for us. You know, I was just telling one of my training partners the other day who's working to get in the UFC, and I love being in the UFC. They, being in the UFC was a great part of my life. But I was there for a little over three years, and I came nowhere close to a million dollars. Right. Uh, so if I'm able to do that one year in the uh, PFL, like, I man, it was way worth it just being in the PFL for one year than, like, I – quadrupled my income from the UFC. So um, I'm definitely excited for the opportunity. Plus, it sounds like I'm going to have activity. I love fighting as much as possible. UFC, I was able to fight three, maybe four times a year, where hopefully this time I'm able to get seven or eight. And I, I love fighting. I don't. I didn't get in the sport to make money, even though that's the biggest part now. Uh, I, I came in the sport to fight. And the more I can fight, the better it is. You know, you bring up uh... – wanting to fight like a hundred times before your career is done. Uh, That tells me you're thinking about things like legacy. You're thinking about what impact you make uh, on the sport or just, you know, what journey you take throughout this process. What would it mean to you to be one of the first few martial artists to win a tournament and get a, a, a seven figure check? Like that doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. And it's, it'd be amazing. I got, I just had my second baby three months ago. Um, you know, I got a family to feed and lives to provide for and, uh, an opportunity like this doesn't come around very often. And so, you know, I'm hoping, obviously I want to be the first one to win it and I want to be able to provide for my family and keep fighting. So, you know, <laughs> my wife will let me keep fighting for a long time. Once I win that money, you, uh, you kind of read my mind here. You bring up your wife. It's kind of where I want to go to. Um, I like you have a family, I have a little boy and when you, get married and then when you have a kid or, or whatever way it comes, you start to realize that you have some mortality. You have to provide, you have to support. Um, if something were to happen to you, all, all these things that you never really think about as a young man start creeping into your mind. Is your family on board? Because it's you're putting you know your, your life at risk every time you go out there. Even when you train, crazy things can happen. I know, you know, people don't have the best insurance and, and more often than not, the real injuries come inside the gym. Is your, your family fully behind you in your mixed martial arts efforts? Uh, well, the kids, they don't really understand. I got a three year old and three month old. So it's not like they really, I mean, he just sees daddy fight and uh, he always wants to be part of it. I think he compares it more to WWE wrestling because he's obsessed with wrestling in general. We watch pay-per-views together we watch old school wrestling he just compares it to that all the time and uh, so he just loves seeing me fight in general I mean there's times in practice where me and court will be drilling takedowns and he'd take me down and Jaden wants to be the referee and counts one two oh two count <laughs> and like you could tell like court's all four but there's times where he's like dude we need to get him out of the way he's getting right. involved right uh, but yeah so he likes it just as much as like wrestling so he doesn't understand uh, it's a little harder for the wife because there's nights where, you know, she cooks dinner and I don't get home till nine, nine thirty, ten o'clock sometimes, and like the, her whole life revolves around my weird schedule. Uh, she, I mean, she's, you know, she's doing things where she has the insurance, so she works the job as well. She's also doing really well in real estate, so she's helping out the family financially. Plus, she has insurance in case something does happen, but. Uh, there's just the schedule of me being there for her and when we could travel or when we could do this. Like, like, babe, I'm in fight camp. We can't leave to this state right now just because you want to go out and travel. I'm, I'm in camp. Right. So her whole life is revolving around me. Um, so, I mean, there's times you can tell it gets frustrating for her. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, 
this fight, I mean, you, you got a long way to go to the million dollars, but do you even speculate what you would do with the money with your wife? Do you, you know, maybe rally her back to the cause by saying, look, I could win a million dollars and we could make all of our dreams come true. Uh, that's always, you know, that's a pushing point, but you know, she, she's more of a, I don't know. She wants me to be there for the family and right. I'm, she wants me to be there all the time and hang out with her and, um, but sounds, she, she is, it, it, she's very, Steven, it sounds like she likes you. I mean, geez, I, know, I seriously don't know why I'm like, why do you want to be around me? Like, say, and there's also times I'm dieting. I give honorary sometimes like, why do you want to be around me when I'm dieting right now? I'm tired after training. Like, why would you want to spend time with me? But she must've married me for a reason. So there you go. All right. Final question. We'll get you on your way. Uh, Lance Palmer's a very tough guy. Been around for a long time. Fought for titles. He's held titles. Um, I- I'm curious what you think this fight looks like. How do you want to get it done? And uh, if you had a finisher for your for your son, what would the finisher be? <laughs> well, obviously, uh, you know, he's, his biggest thing is the RKO. So yeah, maybe when uh, Lance takes a shot, I turn around and turn an RKO and knock him out with that. I think that would make my son's dream come true. But go. uh I'm going to go in. I'm going to punch Lance in the face as much time as possible, and hopefully he goes cold at one time. There we go. Steven Siler, appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on a long run in mixed martial arts. It's very hard to get to prominence. It's even harder to stay there. And, you know, uh, over half a decade into this thing, uh, we're still talking to you, and, and you're fighting at the highest level. So best of luck, and, uh, you know, go, go get that money for your family. Awesome. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.